Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris, man, and as always, I thank you for coming to my channel. I'm proud to announce, because I've gotten a lot of inquiries, so, you know, DVD bundle number four was great. So when you're coming out with bundle number five, so I'm proud to uh, announce the, the rollout of DVD bundle number five. Each time I do a bundle, I try to do something a little different from before, and what I thought about as far as this bundle, bundle number five was, I said I'm going to reduce the price and make it a little more economical because you might not need 300 songs. It's like you just need 25 or 30, you know, of some popular songs you want to play. So uh, that's what I decided to do on this particular bundle. Uh, it's only $25, $2 shipping and handling, and you get 26 songs. And I also want to focus on a certain era. As opposed to just giving you a wide spectrum of styles and, and eras. Because, you know, this is just my personal opinion. For me, uh, my most memorable musical experience is the 60s. You know, I was a really little guy when that was going on. But everybody around me indicated that this was some damn good music. And to this day, still 2017, still damn good music. You know, uh, I don't knock the new stuff because it has its place. I respect it, the creativity. And there's no comparison between the two, the 60s and now, you know. But uh, one thing that I like about the 60s, whether you like it or not, it will help you become a better musician, help you become a better songwriter, help you become a better arranger. Because uh, I just had somebody who requested a tab a service, and they asked me to do a song by an artist by the name of y y Yuna, Y-U-N-A. And uh, it's a song called Crush, and it's featuring Usher. And Usher is one of my favorite late artists. So uh, I did the song. I looked at it less than what? Under 20 seconds. Figured out the whole song. It's only three chords. And what's interesting is the, the three chords that are in the song is exactly the chords that are in Boosty's Rubber Band, I'd Rather Be With You. And then there's another artist, uh, I think this year. I forgot his name because I did a cover for somebody for that song. It's the same, Boosie's Stolen Three Chords. It's like there's no originality anymore, you know. But I'm not going to get on that tangent. But again, uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of the people that asked me to do stuff is from that era, from the 60s. Because a lot of great songs were written then. Chord progressions, the arrangements, uh, you know, just instruments. Guitars were still real popular then, and they, they, now they're making their resurgence. But uh, my favorite era, you know, so I had a lot of people say, hey, could you kind of do something where you do this, this era thing, you know? So I decided to do that. I put together 26 songs, and technically two of them are, one's from the 50s and then one's from the 70s, but all the rest of them are, from like 1966 to 1968 real good music and i'm going to leave a list of the songs down here but i'm going to read them off and i'm going to tell you why i selected those number one jackie wilson whispers i love jackie wilson stuff you know great singer great entertainer michael jackson looked up to him great song number two can't go over in any Smokey robinson and the miracle song special occasion i thought i had covered that before in the motown madness but there were so many hits coming out of detroit at that time I didn't cover even half of half of half of them. Number three, the love lights. How can you tell? How can I tell my mom and dad? Great song. Great chord progressions. One of my all-time favorite songs from that era, the originals, Baby, I'm For Real. Very soulful song. Number five, Junior Walking All-Stars, What Does It Take? Roscoe Brown, number six, That's Enough. Number seven, a rare Marvin Gaye song. I kind of stumbled onto this one a uh, about a week ago it's called one more heartache what's interesting about that song it's a soul song but it's a country and western song the chord progressions and everything as far as structure is a country and western song but they added that r&b element to it because i remember watching a uh documentary on the funk brothers and uh the guitar player and the keyboard player said uh, uh we were jazz musicians when they asked us to come in and we were adding jazz chords in these r&b songs so uh that's a real interesting song. It's a very rare song. Uh, first time I heard it, like I said, uh, two weeks ago, and it's been and it was released thirty something years ago or forty. Okay, number eight. I love her stuff, and I think Smokey Robinson wrote most of her stuff. Mary Wells, dear lover. Number nine, J.J. Johnson. It's all right. A real big 
uh, song that stood out in the 60s. And also Huey, Huey Lewis in the News did a, uh, a remake of that, I think, in the, in the 80s or 90s, probably the 80s. And they did a good job. It's a real good song to play. Bobby Moore, Searching for a Love. Number 11, Can't Go Wrong with the Sam and Dave song. Wrap it up. Also, that's been covered a couple of times, too. The Temptations, a rare cut. Loneliness made me realize. Soul Survivors, Expressway to Your Heart. Number 14, Martha Vandellas and the Marvelettes. Jimmy Mac, when are you coming back? Number 15, Eddie Holloman, This Can't Be True. Number 16, Edwin Starr, SOS. Number 17, Lee Dorsey, Get Out of My Life. Number 18, Stevie Wonder, I Was Made to Love Her. Whenever I do Stevie Wonder stuff, oh, I get a lot of views because Stevie is just a genius. Number nine, I believe it's the Unis, Unifice Court of Love. What's interesting about this song, because I just heard this song about, about two weeks ago. <coughs> the concept is clever. And if it was done and if it was remade, the video will be dynamite because a good song tells a story. And when you listen to it, it unfolds in your mind. And this song, uh, I seen the video for it. It's real clever. It's called Court of Love. And what it is, is this guy got his heart broke by this woman and he's taking her to court, love court. And he's, you know, he's pleading his case as far as this is what she did to me. And do you agree that she broke my heart? And of course, you know, at the end, it's like, we agree, you know, she did break your heart. And and the vocals, this guy's just very soulful. I mean, listen to that song almost brought tears to my eyes because you can hear a good singer really makes you feel what they're singing. You know, whether it happened to them or not. And usually it hasn't. They just sing a song. But you were led to believe that somebody broke his heart and broke his heart badly. You know, it's like, whoa, I feel for you. So, uh, you know, great song. And great vocals. I mean, that guy could sing. And when I did, uh, did a, uh, I looked for... You know, them still being around doing, you know, the, the retro circuit and uh, they're still performing this group. And you know, the guy still got his chops. I mean, this guy can sing. Number 20, Sam and Dave. You don't know like I know. You don't know like I know. Number 22, another Smokey Robinson and the Miracle song, More Love. Number 23, Irma Franklin, Peace of My Heart. Number 24, Jay and the Techniques, Apple Peaches, Pumpkin Pie. Man, I remember that song as a kid running around the house in the 60s. Number 25, which is out of the 50s era, which I actually posted on YouTube. And I said it's a, a preview of, of what's to come in the bundle. Number five released today. Uh, Peppermint Toys Joy in the Starlights. <clears throat> number 26, Marvin Gaye, I Want You. I like to do a lot of Marvin Gaye's tunes because uh, Marvin has a really unique way of writing and the chord progressions. And uh, for a moment, it takes you a moment to kind of figure it out, but it's worth the figuring it out because they're just brilliantly written songs. Marvin Gaye, to me, was a very underrated singer, even though he was a superstar. You know, I thought he was even a bigger superstar than him being the superstar, you know, because uh, not only he was a tremendous singer, he was also a gifted drummer. You know, uh, check out this song called T Plays It Cool, because back in the 70s when I used to go skating, it used to be the song I used to play at the... At the skating room. I actually did a cover that, and uh, they took it off of YouTube because you can't do no more uh, Marvin Gaye tunes. But uh, that was Marvin Gaye playing drums, and he was he was handling the business. I didn't realize that James Brown, Stevie Wonder, and Sammy Davis Jr. were serious drummers too. Not just dabblers, but those guys could throw down on drums. And of course, uh, Marvin Gaye played piano too, you know. Uh, and I'm going to say this again, I'm going to sign off. But, uh, you know, as far as the Marvin Gaye thing, the, the album, What's Going On, uh, him, and, him and Barry Gordy locked horns on a lot of cre uh, creativity issues. And... Barry Gordy did not want that album released. He said, uh, you know, we're trying to keep this simple, keep it about love, and we're not trying to get into these deep political, uh, you know, uh, th uh, themes or uh, ideas. And uh, Marvin said, you know, well, this is how I feel, and this is how I want to express myself. So he fought Marvin at least a year as far as the release of that album because he didn't want it released, uh, Barry Gordy. And when it was finally released, guess what? It was the largest selling album in Motown history. And finally, on that album, the Funk Brothers, who had played on more hit records than the Beatles, Elvis Presley combined, finally got name credits. 
Now everybody knew who these guys were as opposed to uh, just an in-house fan. You know, so uh, just a lot of things about Marvin Gaye that just was not given. He was not given his due. And it just broke my heart because I can never forget this. Uh, and sorry for digressing. I remember the day the news came down that he died. He died on April Fool's. Uh, April 1st, and everybody thought it was a joke. I was on the bus on my way to work, and they was like, Marvin Gaye was killed. I'm like, get out of here. Y'all quit. That ain't funny. And it wasn't It wasn't funny, and it was true. You know, it's just sad that he died the way that he died. But uh, getting back to this, so you get 26 songs for $25 plus $2 shipping and handling. The majority of them are from, the six, from 1966 to 68 during that era. Uh, if you would normally ask me to tab these songs, which my tabbing service is $15 per song, and it's 25 songs here, that'd be $375. But you get this for only $25 plus $2 shipping and handling. I'll leave my PayPal information here. Once I receive your PayPal, uh, your money through PayPal, I'll send you an email. Even though PayPal sends you one to say that uh, I got your money. And then I would send it out. Uh, actually, if I get these uh, orders through this weekend, I'll send out everything on Monday. You know, so uh, you, you'll get your uh, tracking information as far as you know where, know when it's leaving here and when it's showing up on your door. Anybody that's interested in this package f uh, for international, it'd be $20 plus, you know, the $26 plus the $20 uh, for shipping and handling because uh, I've been to the post office many times and that's around the price that they charge to send it to the UK, send it to Japan, send it to France because I've got people overseas that you know, order these and I appreciate it. So uh, I'm going to wrap this up. So again, you get 26 songs, $26. That's including shipping and handling. Uh, these are some great songs. So uh, I'm going to sign off. So I appreciate you guys. And, you know, I'm just trying on this channel to just share the gift of music because once you can play and play well, it's a very rewarding experience. Because I'm going to say this, and I am I promise I'll sign off. I remember watching Back to the Future, the first one, with Michael J. Fox. And this had to have been in the 80s. And, uh, you know, most musicians are not totally happy with their self, even though they could be great. Because Jimi Hendrix, I watched Dick Cavett uh, show, and he, it was, he was on there, and uh, Dick Cavett said, Dick Cavett said, you know, you, you are considered the greatest guitar player that ever lived. And I looked at Jimmy's face, and Jimmy was so humble, and he just, it was like, I don't believe that. And it's like, he kind of shrugged it off, and still the most people, yeah, I'm the top dog stuff. He was like, I don't believe in that. And I was like, man, this is a humble, very talented guy. You know, and uh, I said to myself when I was watching uh, Back to the Future, and it was a scene where Michael J. Fox, a uh, Marty McFly character, was up on stage playing at this dance that him and his hit at that his mother and his father was going to be at. And for the first time, they was going to kiss and get together. So uh, he wanted to keep, you know, the path of how it's supposed to be still of, uh, you know, uh, he did something to kind of offset that and they never got married. and He was never born. But uh, he was sitting up on stage or standing on stage and he was playing. And he's just casually just playing. And I'm like, I want to get to that stage where it looks like it's not hard for me to do. And I know what I'm doing. It ain't a struggle to do it. You know, and finally I got to that point where I'm like, I can sit there and play hundreds of songs consistently. I could play for hours, you know, consistently. You know, so that's a really rewarding feeling that you can get to there. And if you're interested in, uh, you know, trying to get there, if you haven't purchased and you're a beginner, well, I got DVDs, one through seven, thirty-five dollars uh, free shipping and handling, unless it's outside the States, where it's close to seven hours, and I walk you through how to become a good rhythm guitar player. Uh, I talk about things and show you things that most traditional musicians or, or music teachers don't talk about. Also, uh, there are things that they don't even think is important because, you know, they throw this theory thing at you all the time. And I said this, I got over five, close to 4,000 videos and I never had to apply theory to play none of those. But it's interesting and sad that what's even more important than theory is learning structure of song. I've never had an instructor teach me that or even talk about that. That's why I'm able to tab these songs so quickly for people all around the world. You know, it's like I told you, I just did that Yuma tune. It took me less than 20, 20 seconds to map out the entire song and the chords. You know, so I can teach you guys how to get there, too.
if you're interested, you know, learn the guitar the right way. Instead of you got some people on YouTube looking at people's fingers, they think they're going to learn how to play guitar by doing that. No, you're not. You're going to be a dabbler. And uh, it's not, you're not going to be a good one at that. You know, so uh, if you want to do it the right way, you know, I'll leave, uh, well, like I said, uh, you know, $35, you know, uh, that'll be the price of it. Uh, you can't beat that price. You know, most music lessons now, and they've always been expensive, $60 for an hour. Four lessons a month, that's $240 a month. That's a car note. When you pay $35 here, and that's it. There is no installments. If you had to pay $35 next month, you're done. Because the package that I put together, it's going to hold you for about a year or so. And you're going to be referring back to it throughout the year. So I jam a lot of information in those seven DVDs. Actually, technically, it's six DVDs. DVD lesson number five and six are on the same DVD. So I just want to make that clear. So until next time, take care. Thanks for watching.